everybody, it's Allie Edwards and welcome back to this video series where I am sharing some tips and ideas related to the Week in the Life project. Just a quick reminder that I'm going to be embarking on this project starting on Monday, June 20th. I will do seven days of documenting and then after that I will be back on here sharing ways that I am bringing all of my content together into a scrapbook. For today's video, I actually wanted to bring another blog post to life. I'm going Going back and I'm going to read and share with you a blog post that I wrote I believe back in 2015 and this one is called our days are built with stories and it's one of my favorite blog posts related to week in the life and the idea here is to get you to start thinking now about the kinds of stories that you might want to tell during your week. So yes, we wake up on Monday morning and we have no idea what may happen in our life over the course of this week. Uh, and you will capture all kinds of stories. Some of them you could probably anticipate and some of them there's no way that you could have anticipated that it would happen during this week. So to get you to start thinking about the kinds of stories that you might want to include, especially going beyond just the facts, um, love to encourage feelings, love to encourage uh, stories that come from a different place other than just we did this, we did this, and we did this. So I'm going to share with you uh, this blog post that I wrote called Our Days Are Built With Stories. As many of you get to ready to embark on Week in the Life, I want you to think about this statement. Our days are built with stories. Often when I begin documenting my week, I'm hyper-focused on writing down the schedule of the day. And that was really true more so in the past. I'm gonna give commentary as I read this blog post. I'm not as hyper-focused now, but it's easy to get hyper-focused on the, you know, like the routine of the day, right, or the schedule of the day. Uh, stuff like the times we get up, the times we eat, the time I leave the house to take the kids to school, and the time I return home to my desk. I still plan to record some of those kinds of facts in my documenting, um, but I also really want to be conscious and intentional of micro stories, micro stories that make up the day or seven days in a row. And if you've never heard me use the term micro stories before, it's actually something that Aaron, my husband, started talking about uh, one time when we had gone to see Dave Matthews and we were talking about the little stories, right? The little stories that make up our life. Sometimes they're not the things that necessarily bubble up to, oh, this feels like something that must be documented. They're kind of like the tiny little things, but it's those tiny little things when you add them all up, um, to me often feel the most, the most meaningful. Each of our daily actions is often just the top of a story pyramid. Those of you who took my Hello Story class back in the day, or maybe yesterday too, um, are familiar with the concept I focus on in that workshop, which is simply this, tell me more. When you are writing stories of your life or when I am writing stories of my life, one of the things that I do in order to pull out more stories is ask myself that simple question, tell me more. Tell me more. And when I sit down at night on Monday evening to uh, write down some of my own reflections from the day, I will be asking myself, what am I missing? You know. What, what is something, what is more that I could tell about this day? What is, what is something that is deeper or more important or maybe more vulnerable or, you know, any, any sorts of those things? Or am I missing something funny? Like I often focus on some of the more serious things. So for me, tell me more can be focused on, you know, some of the silly things that happen over the course of the day. Tell me more about the why. Tell me more about the who and the where and the what. Don't just tell me you had a cup of coffee. Tell me what you had in it or what you left out, right? Give me more details that will paint a clearer picture of the life you are living right now and then give a little more. Okay, so then in this blog post, it goes on to say, consider these stories. And I made a list of a bunch of different stories and so I'm gonna share those with you guys now, so. The story of why you wake up to an alarm on your iPhone at 5.45 a.m. each morning. The story of why you wake up at different times each day, rarely following a set routine. 
the story of how your child runs into your bedroom regularly, or at least for the last week, in the middle of the night for comfort from the fierce monsters in the dark. The story of how your 12 year old now makes his own breakfast each morning, but you still pour cereal dry with no milk most days for your five year old. The story of why you drive each kid separately to school in the morning and how you treasure the time in between drop offs when you get to select the noise in the car. It's so fun for me to read these because again, this was written in 2015. This is, you know, seven years ago now. My life looks different. The stories, the micro stories, um, the stories that build up my days are different now than they were then. But these are ways to get you thinking about the stories that you might be experiencing right now. The story of why you don't exercise, the story of why you do and how that fits into your day, the story of how you think about it every day but, don't, but still don't choose to put yourself first, the story of how you take your coffee and how you hate those little disposable plastic cups in your single serve coffee maker but how you love a hot cup each and every time, the story of the moments of longing you feel at random points throughout the day for something different for something complete, for something you once had or think you did. The story of the moments of gratitude that pull you out of the mental funk where you literally shake your head as a means of erasing the mental, sp mental spiral. The story of how you walk into your office building each day and are, like clockwork, greeted by the same older gentleman who looks you in the eye and smiles or who barely acknowledges your existence. The story of why you often skip lunch or why you eat the same thing at the same time each and every day. The story of the little things on your desk bills to be paid, invoices to be filed, hand-drawn ideas to be added to the bigger list, lists filed on other lists, some things crossed off with a thick black pen, others with a thin red marker, others simply waiting. The story of your commute in the car, on the bus, on the train. Is it long or short or beautiful or do you wish it away for some other life? The story of the things you are working on, work stuff, life stuff. What's rattling around in your brain these seven days in your life? What is consuming you? What do you wish you were consumed with? The story of how you walked past a family in the grocery store, smiled at the mom as she wrangled a toddler into the cart and wondered what their lives were like. The story of what you were reading, the story of what you were watching, the story of how you have so very little time for either. The story of how Candy Crush is your saving grace after a long day of stress and arguments and discomfort. The story of waiting for your oldest child in the parking lot of the middle school and saying a silent prayer for a report of a good day, a happy smile, a sparkle in his eyes, a conversation, however brief or rote. The story of homework or the lack of and a comparison to your experience growing up. The story of how multiple times throughout the day you quickly contemplate dinner options but never settle on anything specific until the kids are past the point of needing to be fed and how you decide that popcorn, cheddar cheese, and apples is always a very good idea. The story of how your daughter recounts her kindergarten day in all its glory and how the cast of characters seems to multiply exponentially as each day goes by. The story of the hilarious amount of junk mail you receive and how it's a sign of the times we live in. The story of how your cat plops down on the hardwood floor after a long day adventuring around the neighborhood and meows until you rub his belly. The story of why you chose one path instead of another on your evening walk because you know one includes more flowers. The story of what's in your refrigerator, refrigerator and how you feel about it. Do you care a lot about what you eat or a little? Do you plan your meals in advance or fly by moment to moment? Is there very, li is there very little in there because you regularly eat out? What's your favorite snack to reach for now and why? Tell me more, tell me more. The story of your loneliness, the story of your exuberant joy, the story of your current fears and how in particular bad days, particularly bad days, you imagine that you are the only person on the planet with these fears and on particularly good days, you know the ebb and flow and you'll work through them just like most other people do. The story of the movie of the day, carefully selected via a negotiation between the five-year-old and the 12-year-old. The story of how you drink decaf tea with a touch of milk in the kitchen table after the rest of the family has gone to bed and how you give thanks for the real life you live today. What stories will you tell next week? What stories will you tell next week? One of the things that you can consider today after you've watched this video is actually making a list of some of the stories, stories that you might anticipate that you would tell next week. That can be this kind of thing. You can just make a list, you know, a list of the story of this, the story of this, the story of how I am doing this right now, the story of how I'm witnessing this, the story of waiting, the story of all of those things that I just said were me sitting down in 2015 and making up a list 
of some of the different stories that are happening in my life at the, or were happening in my life at that point in time, right? That that concept that my that our days are built with stories. Those were the stories that were the building blocks of my day in 2015, and those are the kinds of things that I hope to capture uh, this coming week. So, lots to think about as we move forward uh, to next week.